experience. It's not something that can be taught, cannot be written in words. It's something you just have to experience yourself. So that's why it's called Anubhuti. And it's all inside. <clears throat> Whatever equipment that you need to do that, it's all in here. And there is no, there is uh, external help available in the form of scriptures, words, teachings, and all that. But ultimately, only you have to do it. You have to die yourself. <laughs> if you want to go to heaven, <laughs> no one will send you there. You have to die yourself. So, <clears throat> it's all about you. Spiritual, it is all about you. Whatever difficulties you're having, whatever conflicts you're having, whatever stress you're having, it's all about you. And that's one thing I have learned in spirituality. You are responsible for all your actions and you clean up your own, you know what. Yes. That's <laughs> it. Simple as that. So you make a mess, you clean up. Whatever mess you're making right now, you're going to clean up later. And whatever you're cleaning right now, it's about the mess that you have made in the past. It's all karmas. Yes. So, <clears throat> in the present life, as we have more and more desires, more and more attachments, and the more and more running after, it just gives us the restlessness. And out of thousand objects that we may desire, we may achieve about hundred of them. And then, after achieving hundred of them, we still sorry that we did not achieve the other 900 and 9,900, whatever is left. So in the process of achieving more and more, we are not even enjoying what we have. And the desires for any object is nothing but thoughts. If you really break it down, <coughs> thoughts is what generates the desires. It's the other way around. The desires is all about thoughts. Everything that we do in this world is nothing but thoughts, right? And <clears throat> so when we reach into meditation, in a thoughtlessness state, the desires disappear too. And desires generates kind of restlessness in our mind. So that restlessness does not get satisfied until we meet the object. So once that restlessness ends, we have a relative sense of pleasure when we come in contact with the object. So that relative pleasure is dependent on so many situations. First, you have to have restlessness for that object. Otherwise, you get the object, it doesn't really matter to you. You have to have a desire for that object first. And then you have to have that object. And then you have satisfaction. But since the desire generated the thoughts and the action to achieve that object, and then the object itself, when you achieved it, was in a certain state of condition that you could enjoy it. Everything is material, and by laws of matter, they are subject to birth, growth, decay, and death. So it's like a constantly changing thing all the time. <clears throat> so the pleasure that you get also lasts a very short time. New car, you'll be excited for a month, two months, and then and it's just another car. So <clears throat> that's not a real pleasure. The pleasure that is inside you is what you want to achieve. And that's when you have to realize that only time you will realize it, you step aside and you look at the whole situation, that's what you're doing in life. When you are in the middle of the life, living the life, you're not going to be able to see it. So once in a while, every day, for half an hour, you have to brood over it. For 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you have to set aside for yourself. Even though you don't meditate, at least think what you are doing, you know, what you are actually achieving in life, what are you actually going, what is your goal, and where are you going, and what is the ultimate outcome of all these things. And when you do that, you will realize that we are nothing but like, like an animal, just running after running after running, after, just fulfilling our duties. And like I was telling Deepak this morning, we are propelled, compelled, and impelled by all the time. <laughs> so, <clears throat> good morning. We are, we are propelled by our vruttis. Whatever karmas that we have done in the past has put certain type of vruttis in our mind. So vruttis we have developed over 
several lifespans. Mm -hmm. And whatever actions that you're doing right now is a result of those vruttis. Now, the vruttis are tendencies. Tendencies means which way you gravitate. Like it's almost like we are standing on a mountain top and there are so many slopes for going downwards. Somebody prefers to stay up where they are. But a lot of us, all of us, have some tendency to fo fall on one of the paths that we take. Those are our vruttis. That's why I gave my famous example. We go to a town, all of us, a totally unknown town on a tour. And then everybody will seek out the place of pleasure depends upon their vrutti. If I love to drink, I'm going to be looking for a bar. If somebody is looking for a temple, somebody is looking for a cigarette, cigarette, whatever. Yeah. So all our paths will be different. That's why we have so many varieties of actions in this world. Everybody is going in a different way. But it's all decided by our vruttis, our tendencies that we have accumulated over the period of multiple lives, right? When we die, we don't die. We die with our vruttis and we carry on with the vruttis. Vruttis stay at the Hiranyagarbha level and they keep on haunting us. Even if you don't want to sometimes, that's just your tendency. It just comes out of you. It's in you, you know. So vruttis compel you, or rather propel you. It, it pushes you to go in certain directions. So that way we are being propelled all the time. Then the next is we are compelled. We live in the society, we live in the world, and we have to follow the rules, the rules of the government, rules of this, rules of this, rules of that. So we are compelled by them to act in certain ways. Even if you want to drive at 80 miles an hour, you're not going to do it because there is a law. So all those things, your behavior is, again, compelled. And then impelled where you feel moral obligation for your kids, for your fellow employees, whatever. You say morally you're obligated to do certain things. Uh, you have to behave in certain ways. There is no law against it, but you behave in such a civilized manner, this and that. So basically there is a constant pressure. So we are always, those are the three words basically describe everything that we do. We are propelled, compelled, and impelled all the time, right? But where are we? What action do we do what is spontaneous that we really love to do? Ruttis make us do certain things. Compulsion makes us certain reason. Impulsion makes us do certain other things. But what are the, our real things? So when we take up the meditation and, and go towards the samadhi, then that's where we are realizing our true self. Good morning. So, <clears throat> ultimate goal is to reach to our original state where we are not compelled, impelled, or propelled by anything else. <coughs> and yes, taking a path to the samadhi is also we are creating a new vrutti. It is a vrutti because it's our tendency to gravitate towards the samadhi. But it is a good vrutti and a vrutti that you can live with and vrutti that you can develop over the period of years. Ultimately, it's going to take us where, it's going to take us out of all this mess, right? So now, vruttis can you cultivate something new? Mm -hmm. But what, besides what we already... Yeah, of course. With. What's that? I, I didn't follow this, whatever that you are born with or right. you move forward mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. from one, gener one birth to other. Sure. But can we cultivate something new, Vrutti? Exactly. No, of course. Well, that's, that's the way it is. Like, <clears throat> whenever we start losing a desire for in one Vrutti, mm -hmm. we always, mind is going to need some kind of attachment. That is the job of the mind. The whole purpose of creation of the mind was to attach to something. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> once you drop one thing and attach to something else, that starts becoming a vrutti. And then you sublimate. You just keep on rising on the ladder. Eventually, you start dropping the lower vruttis and then you cultivate the higher vruttis. And the, it's like, I always say, like playing with a balloon. When you were a kid, you would go after the balloon. You would fight for the balloon. You would cry for the balloon. Now you don't care about the balloon. So vrutti to play with the balloon is gone. Now you have something else to play with, like that. So the whole idea of spirituality is to get you out of the material world and realize your full potential, which is the spiritual world. Because <coughs> we do have a dual aspect. <coughs> the, 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 the particles at the quantum levels, they have a dual nature. They are particles and they are waves. They are energy E equal to mc squared. There is a constant interchange. So if particles have that dual nature, we are, what are we? We are particles. 
we are atoms, we are DNAs, DNAs are made of molecules. So we also have a dual nature, but we just don't realize it because we are so fascinated by the material world. So we constantly keep going after material objects. But that is our very transient existence. Like if you have a, if you are a drop of water in the deep ocean, but at some point you are being forced and then you become a wave. And then the wave stays as a wave and then falls down and merges back at the, again with the ocean. What is the time frame? How long the wave is going to last compared to how much time you're going to spend in the ocean itself? So your true existence is the ocean, mm -hmm. not the waves. So, but when we get carried away, all we're talking about is just the waves. We are just superficial things. So our deep nature is where we, what you want to be. So, <clears throat> see, it's like when we, somebody says that there is constant pleasure being in the samadhi, it's not really a pleasure in a conventional way. It's a bliss state. It's, a, it's a basically absence of suffering. The suffering that is inherent in material world is not there. There is no suffering there. So it's a total peace and bliss. So it's more like a total, total surrender, basically, of your ultimately to the consciousness. So it's like total peace. So that is what we're really aiming for. And this is the first time in the evolution we've been, giving that, we've been given that equipment that a soul can fill itself. You know, and so far, all these years, you know, all these animals, had been, they did not have that available. But through the path of meditation, that thing is available now. So it's almost like we are seeing a dream, and the dream is towards the end. We are like half asleep, seeing the dream. At the same time, we are like half awake, and we know that we have to wake up in the next short time. But the dream is still enjoyable, so we are enjoying it, things like that. So we are at the very twilight of the evolution now. And someday we'll be a total waker and we're going to laugh at the dream. And this is all a dream because it is just the creation of the mind. Because every single desire, every single process that we do, every single action that we do is nothing but thoughts. And thoughts are operating at the mind level. But when we're talking about meditation and samadhi, we are transcending the mind. So everything is going to look like a dream because now we are not operating at the mind or the body level, not even the intellect level. We are beyond that. So at the really awakened state, everything else will just look like a joke. You know? mm. Even now, sometimes when I look back, I went on vacation on so-and-so island. You know, right. I still feel like it's a dream. It's a dream, right. Exactly. Yeah. It's like you have memories and right, that's right. about and it. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So, because everything <clears throat> that we do in this world it's basically a photograph. Whatever moment that we do have, uh, we have a, a photograph, photographic capacity in the mind with a tremendous amount of hard drive. So we just keep on capturing the pictures second to second to second to second to second. <coughs> and you know, when we run it in a continuous, it looks like a motion. Mm -hmm. And whenever it goes in the past, we pull out any picture that we really want, any, any, that we just pull it out, and that's our memory. So basically, it's a hard drive that's mm -hmm. playing around. But it's a material thing because it's totally dependent on material objects, right? All the positive experiences that we have. But don't, there are only when the extrasensorial <coughs> joys that we have, those are the spontaneous actions that we do, that the real, real pleasures, those are beyond the senses. You know, that's when it's not operated at the mind level. That's when the true consciousness is operating through. So. Can you still elaborate more on the conscious level, like spontaneous, when you, you said when you make the spontaneous decisions? Spontaneous decisions are where your ego becomes less important. When you say that you give up your ego, mother taking care of a child, child may be the ugliest child in the world, child may be abusing the mother, but this, the love of the mother just flows. It is, does not, at that point, mother gives up her ego, mother says, it does not, doesn't even analyze the situation, <coughs> it just acts spontaneously. Okay, that's okay, it's my child, like that. <clears throat> so those are the actions that we carry out that where we true we are what we are you know <clears throat> so they said desires are not all that bad it's just desire to be a higher level is also a desire a vrutti that you can easily live with and develop it right so <clears throat> the same way 
But if you put your mind to it, you can become anything you want, like we always say, including Brahma. If you want to become Brahma, put your mind to it, becoming a Brahma, you will become Brahma. So the question is, what is your priority? What is your priority, wealth or health? Health. 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 Right? <laughs> what is your priority, health or happiness? Happiness. 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 And now the third question is, what is your priority, happiness or samadhi? Samadhi. Perpetual samadhi. Perpetual samadhi. Can I ask you something? If yes. you don't have health and physically you're suffering, how can you be happy? That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> the happiness, That's if it is related questions. to the material, then you're not going to be happy. But when you go into the spiritual aspect, and again, it's very deep. It's where it comes to total faith and total surrender. Because your suffering is at the body level. But when the body is important to you, then the suffering is also important to you. And the body's health becomes very important. But if, if for some reason you do get into <coughs> higher levels of samadhi and you reach to a higher purpose and you really connect yourself to the consciousness, and then at that point the body is an instrument for you. You are not the body anymore. So suffering of the body does not have to be your suffering but you dissociate yourself at that level because you're not living at the body level anymore. But again, it's a different state of mind. Again, it, you just cannot talk about it. You just have to experience it. But analyzing it, we always talk about it, right? So mm -hmm. you are not the body. But <clears throat> that's all intellectual discussion. But to, to be in a reality is the only way it can happen is if you meditate. If you meditate, you realize your true nature. You are close to the consciousness. And then you realize that if you transcend the body, you don't even think about the body, you don't, nothing, but you still exist. And actually it is possible that even physically you are not healthy and ill and sick, still you can be happy. No. It's again it's a state of mind. Yeah, I mean, I agree, but that happiness just comes, you know, in <coughs> way, even if you have a physical problem and you are, it will, certain things still will give you happiness. But in, if I have to choose between happiness and health, I will always choose health. Because health is the major, that's what, I mean, right now I feel, you know, I'm too new to the club. But you may have a health and you may not be happy. That is true. That is true. <laughs> you may have a wealth and you may not you be may happy. Have, right. But, but, but even if you have a health, you, you still want, you st whatever you do, because you want to be happy. No, if you're healthy, right. Right, the things you will do, what makes you happy? Usually. Yeah. But, I mean, there are healthy people who still happy. have, they're not happy. So, again, that's the next level of, because health is at the physical level. But so, there are limitations, right? And the happiness, if somebody gives it to you, guarantees you, and then, irrespective of the, say, the body, you know, of course, in the long run, body is important, but that true happiness can transcend. Even this, so it does not have to be like if you don't have a health, you still can be happy. But if you have health, you may not be necessarily happy. But if you are truly happy, health will follow. Then health will follow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> True happiness sure. is a If you're truly happy, you don't have to look for health. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is yeah, it's all relative, it's also. No. Yeah, it's relative terms too. <laughs> Again, happiness, happiness, if it is a material based, then probably not. I'm talking about the true spiritual happiness, because in true spiritual happiness, you are content with whatever you have. You are content with uh, Darbat Roli Shak or simple food rather than extravagant food. So uh, automatically, you know, you live happy with a simple life versus extravagant life. We'll do an experiment, uh, Mida Ben. Next time if you come to retreat, you go for all the medical checkup just before three days, and go for medical checkup after three days, and you see what is the change in your health parameters. That only will satisfy you, nothing else. <laughs> no, I'm not looking for, I'm just looking for some answers. No, no, I'm, get, I'm telling you. We all are. Example. <laughs> we all are looking for answers. To me, a quadriplegic, how can he be, I mean, you know, I mean, he, in his own, even if, like, I don't know, I mean, he's, somewhere he's feeling bad. Somebody who has a original health problem from age 15, 16, Health becomes very important to me. And I'm talking that from my personal experience. I have been sick since age 16. I mean, I have, I have patients. 